Hey guys, and welcome back to Donica and Shelby Read. I'm Donica. I'm Shelby. Today we're going to do something special because it is Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. One of my favorite holidays. I mean, top two. And it's not two. Today we are going to be doing a little pumpkin carving. We have these tiny, absolutely adorable pumpkins. We both decided that we were going to carve the same thing without consulting each other. Like we both knew what we were going to carve. And then Donica told me and I was like, I'm not even joking, that's exactly what I was yeah. gonna carve. I'm just gonna say it because I don't think anyone will even know. Okay. <laughs> Shelby's gonna freehand, but I found this is Jack's Spooky Jack O' Lantern stencil. This is from Animal Crossing. I started playing Pocket Camp again, and I love Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. It is my favorite thing in the universe, and all month I've been spending time with Spooky Jack and the fishing tourney. I think I had to like go flowers for him, and then lastly we had like the gyroidite hunt or whatever, so. Oh man, you've had some fun. I've had some fun with Jack, so I'm ready to carve him on this one. Okay, can we talk about how on Animal Crossing New Horizons, you only get Jack one day on Halloween at five o'clock? Or no, it starts at five, I think he's there all day. But we're both carving him. We're both at our heart. Animal Crossing fangirls. While we're carving, each of us are going to be carving and the other one's gonna tell spooky stories. We've tried to collect stories from around our family and friends. Our own personal stories? Our own Do you personal have I have been really fortunate to not have basically any paranormal situation happen in my life at all. I've had very, this one thing that if you're a skeptic, you would be like, girl, that's just crazy. I know one that I always, I think about this often this one scary story i think mama told me about you i don't think you ever told me i've asked you about it so i wonder if that's gonna be the story you share okay i have two but one where there was like an actual like entity that i remember and at the end because we don't have too many spooky stories to share it shouldn't take that long but i printed out some this or that halloween edition and would you rather halloween edition so i'll be asking shelby some question. Do you want to go first, spooky story? Yes, I'm gonna draw Jack while I talk. Is that okay? I know we already said I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want. Because I want to get okay. started on on his little face. Shelby can't multitask, so this is gonna be interesting. I can do stuff like this while I talk, but we'll see how this goes. I keep forgetting the mic is here, so I don't have to project to the. Okay, the story that I'll tell first. I sorry. <laughs> the story that I'm gonna start with is a story from when I was little and I loved playing with Barbies when I was little and I would always play in the exact same spot. My bed was in the middle of the room and I'd play on the side. One day I remember playing with them and I looked up and right next to my closet, there was like an entity there and I remember it being white and I remember it being a woman like with a cloak. Actually, I was thinking about this story recently because I always thought it was something scary and like I tried drawing it after the well actually what happened is I saw I looked up and I saw it I don't know if it was gone or if I was so scared that I just didn't look at that area again but I remember getting up and running to Donica's room because she was right across the hall from me I don't even remember you run I probably locked you out <laughs> I just I did run across the room to your room. <laughs> I walked right across the hallway to your room and I told you about it. I remember we got on her computer and we went to this website and it was like a ghost identification website. You were like, which of these did it look most like? And it was like different shapes of ghosts and there was like a figured one and I was like, it looked like that. She was not scared at all. I feel like she hardly cared because I now thinking back, I don't think you believe me. Y'all, I am seven years older than Shelby, so <laughs> I was a teenager for most of the time she could talk so that means i did not care about <laughs> you're much. like i'm just gonna confirm right now that i didn't care so that's my one story of like See? legitimately seeing something that i know for a fact for sure it was a like a full-bodied and it happened to you you can't discredit it yeah you know? so and the weird thing is like i don't i guess i never realized how truly weird that was there's that show adam ruins everything he was talking about i think memories one time or something he said how you only have to remember something a certain way, I think three times. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong. Three different times for it to solidify in your mind, like a memory. So I've always remembered that story. Shelby telling me it was like, almost like a grim reaper is what I would envision, like, but like cloaked. You couldn't see anything, maybe mist and being black. So you saying it was white is just not how I remembered it, the story going. Really? I remember being, scared for you but like later on years later when we would talk about it 
I don't remember being scared for you at that time. And I remember being scared, but I remember not thinking it was necessarily evil. I think I wanted it to be so that it was creepier. To my knowledge, I don't remember it being like super menacing. I don't even remember seeing the face. That's just so weird. I don't know what that was all about. Yeah, that is definitely a weirder and more paranormal than anything I've ever experienced because I do believe in ghosts for sure. I just think I've heard too many stories within my own family to not. My story is more, I didn't see anything, but when me and my husband moved to Vegas, we were there for seven years, probably about six or seven years go by and we got orders to move to Florida. So when we moved to Florida, that those were not too old but older houses like literally as soon as we get there weird stuff happens my twins one once my twins were born you know we had toys everywhere <gasps> we're supposed to cut this the top off first this is gonna be like uh, that song do 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 while we're <laughs> oh, <laughs> this no. is sped up we did it <laughs> We got there, it took us a while, but we got there all right. We had so many toys everywhere. I had three children, so we had plenty of toys for them. Very frequently, toys would go off in the middle of the night, mostly in the afternoon. And we looked it up and Derek, my husband Derek had said that it could just be because it's so humid in Florida, so the humidity change was messing with the batteries. So a lot of the times I just chalked up to that and we, even my twins had taken to turning their toys off. Like we would make sure they weren't even in the on position. Remember, they used to be so scared when their toys would go yeah. off. Yeah, I don't know if I- Maybe there was a, some sort of- They little... might have been able to sense a little creepiness. And I remember you being like, the twins are so hilarious and crazy because every time a toy goes off, they cry. <laughs> it wouldn't happen often, but at night, certain toys would have to be off and they would even take them out of the room. Really, I didn't think anything of it, but now looking back, that is kind of strange. I didn't think I, anything of it either. And they, you would tell me these stories. My husband being in the military, he would go on TDYs. He would be gone for weeks at a time to another state. Sometimes it was only a week, sometimes it was a month, but he would be gone. It kind of, I feel like the toys have been ramping up, you know, them being, going off to the point where I was getting kind of nervous for this upcoming TDY because the toys have been just, just seemed like they've been going off. Things would fall. And like I said, it really centered around toys, which toys would fall sometimes to where they weren't really like in a situation where they could fall. It was almost like they were falling dramatically, you know, from a shelf that where they were completely stable. <laughs> they would levitate around the room and then fall. <laughs> <laughs> the night before he left on a TDY, he knew I was I was scared because the one I'm a chicken as it is, but I just wasn't really vibing with all these toys going off all the time, even though we would turn them in the off position. When my children would play with them during the day, they would inevitably be turned on. The night before before he left, he is so, so sweet. Shout out to my husband, he is so sweet. He said, hey, here's this prayer. It's a prayer to St. Michael. He protects, he like he, is he drives notorious out. for like driving out demons and Satan. He was like, say this prayer if you get scared, you know, maybe we'll help you. The day he leaves, nothing happens. Nothing happens, I put all the kids to bed. This is the night he is gone. The first night, I stay up past when my children go to bed, you know, have my little mommy time, read a book, whatever. I walk up our stairs to our bedroom, sit down on the bed. I am there for like 10 seconds and the toy goes off downstairs. I just looked up and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I go downstairs, turn the toy off, and I'm really scared. I have my phone out because I'm about to call my dad and say, hey, look, you gotta book me a hotel room for the next 14 days because I can't stay in here in this house. And I just was like, no, you're, you're being dramatic, obviously. So I got out the prayer and I said the prayer. This is what's so crazy. Not one toy ever went off again. Mm -hmm. After that prayer, after that night, that one toy, after I said that prayer, not a single toy, nothing ever weird happened. And we left, we were stationed at Tyndall Air Force Base. So we were supposed to be there for I think four years before we were get, get a new duty station, but then Hurricane Michael hit and we actually left bef you know, before our time was up. So we weren't there much longer after this, but maybe like six months to a year. I can't remember quite when it happened. Sometimes I feel like ghosts aren't trying to be scary. If it is a ghost, if you do believe, 
it's just setting off toys. It could just be their energy too or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then to know like, oh, she's scared. Like she said this prayer, she almost cried and left for two <laughs> weeks. Maybe we should chill out or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. That was it, that was all, never again. And never since then have I come into contact with anything that could be paranormal, I don't think. Do you know this is my favorite thing, part of carving a pumpkin is taking this stuff out? It's so satisfying. Do you have a story? Is there any stories you wanna talk about? Or we just have more? I wanna tell many little things that from Mama's family. <laughs> Yeah, you tell one and I'll tell one. Our mother grew up in a house on the south side of San Antonio that was super haunted. Super yeah, haunted. they have so many so crazy many stories. stories. Like, things that cannot be explained. If you've seen The Haunting of Hill House, that was in where my mother grew up. <laughs> I have a story from one of my friends, her roommate. Um, I'm scared. One of my best friends, like my first or second year of college, she lived in, there were these townhomes. So there's a top floor, a middle floor where the kitchen- And this is a room. dorm? No, it's an oh. apartment. Oh, But apartment. it's like student housing. So there's like a top floor where there's like two bedrooms or just depending on what like root floor size you get. There's like a top floor. It's just gonna be like totally bedroom. The middle is always like the living area. That's where the, like the living room, the kitchen is. And then there's stairs going down and then there's more rooms down there. They were like an animal loving little group of people. Mm -hmm. So they had a dog, a cat. Well, the animals wouldn't, one of the dog would never go down there. And, and they, at where? first they thought he was just scared of stairs. He wouldn't go to that lower lowest level of mm. their town home. They thought he was just scared of stairs, I think. But then I don't think he had a problem going up those stairs going to the top level so they were like okay whatever he just doesn't like going down there it's whatever never say whatever about your animal because because they, they know they, they know their little eyes see things <laughs> from beyond the beyond things. especially cats man those well that's what where the that's the next part the girl who lived down there i'm pretty sure she didn't ever The girl who lived down there, I'm pretty sure she didn't ever like it down there. I'm pretty sure she was always creeped out because she, I wasn't close to her. I was close to the girl who lived mm. with her. So I don't know how her general feelings of being down there, but I remember that she didn't like it down there. Well, one night she's laying down with her cat and the cat like gets up from the bed and like is on guard and is like oh standing at like looking at something. And the cat is so freaked out looking at something in the room. Oh no. And so the girl is so scared. Yeah. She's like, what are you looking at? And she gets so scared she doesn't know what else to do. I think she says a Hail Mary. Mm. And as soon as she said that, the cat stood down and like Aww. fell asleep. And so That's she fell awesome. asleep. Cause she was like, okay. I have four cats. They don't generally just stand on guard like that. There was like something else that made her feel like it's looking at something. Like, I think it was probably standing there for a long time, prolonged looking oh, at yeah, something. Oh yeah, I believe you, I believe you. We were saying my my mother's house was pretty haunted growing up. We've only talked to like my mom, but I am sure if we had talked to my, my uncles or my aunt, they would have their own experience that they could share. The one that sticks out to me is like, my grandma was in the shower, and she heard just a bunch of chaos in the kitchen, like drawers opening, which there's many stories of just the drawers opening and closing and like just a bunch of ruckus. So she yells like, hey, y'all like keep it down. I don't know who was home at the time, but she's yelling. And then she gets out of the shower and no one's there. And she does see, I think my uncle, but he's like way down the street playing with his friends. Things like that would happen pretty often. Do you know this story where Mama had like a sleep paralysis on the couch. No. She had a sleep paralysis on the couch and she couldn't get up. When she like woke up, her mom was like, hey, what was your best friend's name here? Like Susie, or actually I think it was a guy. What was Bill doing here earlier? My mom was like, what are you talking about? I think you were like laying on the couch and she was like, was that him? He like looked at you and then walked away. What? And mama was like, uh, no one was here. Oh my. Yeah. Was that guy alive? Yeah, he was okay. alive. Okay, so but, it was just like, it could be a guy. She, she said she didn't know if it was him. She assumed mm. it was because if there's gonna be a guy in the house like that. She... I think the other scary one I've heard is that my mom, I think was coming home from school one day. My mom was second youngest. So 
her, my aunt and my uncle were older than her, and then my, my other uncle was the baby. So it was like her her and my youngest uncle would always get into trouble. And yeah. They were very mischievous. They remind me of like an 80s movie, like all of their little adventures. Very stranger things, yeah. actually stranger things. Yeah, it really is. That house was very strange. But my favorite one is I think my mom was coming home one day and she saw someone. Do you remember the house? Do you remember? I was too little to ever have seen it or go there or anything. I could, like I said about memory, it's very fluid but I remember you would turn and there was like a field kind of behind the house so you could see the back of the house very clearly before you rounded the corner to get into the driveway you could see the back of it there was a screen door just glass so my mom's coming you know she has a ways to go to get home but she's walking and you can see the screen door perfectly and there's someone standing there just looking at her so she gets home and she's like, hey, trying to figure out who it was. I think she said it was a girl. I don't know if she really could tell. And no one was home. Dang. What's your biggest fear? Legitimately my like biggest not, fear? Like not our weird fears, which we yeah. and Shelby we, have talked about We have irrational this. fears. We have like fears that could never happen. Like I'm afraid of uh, going to like an alternate dimension, which. <laughs> and yeah. like appearing over the ocean and then falling in. Teleporting it. and like not knowing that you're going to, so you're in the ocean. <laughs> no, an actual fear. And it's the fear that I have currently right now. And it's, every time I'm alone in the house, I feel this. The fear is going to manifest itself right now because I'm scared to say this too loud, but right. I'm scared that someone snuck in here sometime mm -hmm. in the house's conception and somehow has been hiding hiding this entire time and has been living here this entire time. Okay, my fear is home invasion, so... So similar, but it's not a ghost. It's like that there's yes. a real person in yes. here just being a creeper, like watching. For some reason, the house that we used to live in growing up, I would have nightmares and to this day, I still have nightmares of, I felt like the front door wasn't secure enough or like someone didn't lock it, which is so funny because my mom and dad were so diligent on locking, but I still to this day have, we had, screen glass doors on the back and i have nightmares about someone coming in like i don't like i, I just, have dreams I'm about scared. those doors too where do those manifest from i'm curious here's just a couple things my mom remembers her and her brother share the exact same memory oh not the weird one oh don't tell that one you can tell that one it's weird though they both have the same memory of standing on the side of their bathtub and jumping in and swimming around it like it's a pool and they're like, how did we do that? Did we shrink? What do you call that? A and it's a regular sized bathtub. Collective like a memory or like a, sh yeah, a shared memory that they shrunk basically. Like, honey, I shrunk the kids. Yeah. That is very weird. Maybe one day, like mom went up to him and was like, do you remember shrinking? And like his brain just registered it as a memory. It was like, Doo -doo. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, we shrink. You know who? <laughs> I'm not going to say who because I think she watches, but she thought she saw fairies. Or said she saw fairies outside their window. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> it was all our, my, our mom and our uncle <laughs> shrieking. I've said this before in videos. I will always be that person who believes you. If you said you, if you come up to me and said, I saw fairies, I, I will believe you. I will honestly believe you because I just, man, there are some things. But you know what? That might be me wanting the world to be more magical magical that might be me growing up on harry potter you know I love magic stuff i do too just to finish up in our own personal lives like my brother he when he was little very in tune with the spirit world coming from someone who has kids there's an age where they they don't i read enough baby books to know they don't yet know how to manipulate you at the age where he did not know how to lie there was there's no reason for him to lie he was very much like my mom could tell when he got scared and he would see something and it would scare him and he just shared a story with us he's over there he's right there i could throw a rock and hit him <laughs> i could throw a pumpkin seed and hit him the one story he shared the other day that it was new to me i've I got, never heard that I either heard that story because the people in our family who are most clairvoyant my father and my brother do not that's how I like feel like I know it's real because they don't share these stories. They don't want any kind of recognition. It's like very kind of personal to them. So he shared one with us the other day where he was little but old enough to remember. Our uncle passed away. So when he was a wee baby, he was in the back room of my grandma's house and he said like a man came up to him. Did you know it was Uncle Frankie? Oh, you didn't know. 
so he didn't know who it was. It was just a man. He was playing in the back room. The man comes up to him. He said, he asked him how his day was going. And my grandma kept like a little altar, which I think is kind of common, especially in older Hispanic homes. She kept a little altar with like a candle lit and a picture of my uncle, like a picture of the Virgin Mary and just religious things to light a candle for him every day. My uncle came up to him and was asking him how his day was. And he basically, he told him, do you know who I am? And he points to a picture that's on that altar. And he says, that's me, I'm your uncle. I think that's really it y'all. I'm sure every year we'll find more, we'll share more. There are so many we can so, share with so you. So many. So we're gonna do some special Halloween questions. I hey. have some would you rather and Shelby has some this or that. Thank y'all for sticking around. We yeah. almost hit 200 subscribers. That's crazy. Our family on both sides have really always instilled reading into our lives. And I feel like I'm so grateful for just them saying how important reading is and just being older now and appreciating it, you know? And keeping it fun too. Like oh, keeping yeah. reading fun for us. It was always a treat to read. It wasn't like, yeah. you better be reading. It was a treat for sure. We would go to San Antonio to Borders, RIP to Borders. <laughs> yeah, it was always like special because we're small town kids and going to San Antonio was always really fun because they've had basically everything our little 2000 population town did. It's like really cool that anyone would care what we think about books or follow us along. You know, we talked about what's our goal for booktube, like what's, what's our goal for our channel? And my goal, one day someone send us an arc of their book. It could be, it could be Shelby, it could be contemporary that I'll never read and I'll be happy. That's my goal. If we ever get sent an arc, I will probably make a whole video on that book because I'm so grateful. <laughs> Our live action interpretation of it. <laughs> I will write a screenplay for the book, act it out. Okay, here's your first one. Walk through a graveyard at midnight or spend the night in a spooky abandoned house. That's really hard because I always think about it. And for like, for me, graveyards are very peaceful places. Like they actually don't really scare me because I- that night. Honestly, I want to pick that one because it seems like it'd be kind of fun because it'd be a little spooky, but also they're just so peaceful. But I feel like if it, it would be like a once in a lifetime thing to stay in a spooky house. Okay, here, here's me. Here's my Like thoughts. unless you're like a BuzzFeed I'm tall person or you're like, <laughs> your life is like centered around doing that. When do you have the opportunity to do First that? of all, I have watched too many movies to know that a spooky night in a spooky band house is not it, sis. I say that as if I didn't just read The Haunting of Hill House. And I'm taking that walk through that graveyard with my hot cocoa and my boo and, and my boo meaning my ghost <laughs> the ghost is holding me so i will definitely pick walk through a graveyard because i'm not spending the night first of all in, on, in a sleeping bag yeah i don't want anything to attach house. to me also you, know, yeah. you never know you always hear about that you know what my sister-in-law i should have asked her before this video my sister-in-law went to a haunted house around her town somewhere that's kind of pretty known to be haunted this hospital and I think something attached to her. And I think she said she came home and weird stuff started happening. Like her TV would turn on in the middle of the night to like static. Oh I mean, I'm talking, and she actually went back to the hospital to like drop off the spirit. <laughs> and I think it worked. Oh but exactly, that's another reason gosh. I wouldn't do haunted tours because if something attaches to you, yeah, but shout out to her. I'll get that full story for next year. <laughs> I, I completely forgot that story, but yeah, something attached to her. So graveyard. Yeah. When graveyard. I think about the, the ramifications, the ramifications graveyard. Okay. This or that aliens or ghosts alien. <laughs> I want to believe. <laughs> I pick ghosts because aliens are so scary to me because again, it's a real thing. Uh, I did that one with Derek and he said ghosts. He's like, because ghosts, and we did agree that it, would, it didn't say poltergeist, which usually those are oh. the evil ones. I also pick ghosts because it reminds me of Halloween and this year, Halloween was so fun. I do not want it to end. You know that feeling when Christmas is over and you're like, what's the point? In fact, you said you're not gonna let it end and you're gonna read scary stories. I'm going into November with Halloween mood. And aliens for me, I just, you know, I'm obsessed with aliens. My next tattoo, yeah. I've drawn it out a little bit and it's gonna be, it's gonna have a UFO in it for my oldest son. I'm getting a tattoo for every one of my children. What? I just thought of something. 
fun. I've talked about this, but I just love aliens, love the X-Files. January. January what? is such a boring month. There's nothing going on. Okay. And what? if there's something really important going on, please let me know. I'm sorry <laughs> to, if there's something important going on that I don't know about. We should make January extraterrestrial January and we read everything alien. Okay, I can, I can dig it. Mama, is that you? We were just talking about you and your scary... Yeah, we're filming and experience. I think I butchered one of your scary stories. Sleep Did you have a sleep paralysis? And, and then what happened during that sleep paralysis? I was just laying there and I, I opened my eyes and I could see the room all around me but I couldn't move. And I was like trying to call my mom. I was like... I could, I could hear myself calling my mom but not coming out. Oh no. And I was like, if I could only crawl to the edge of the bed. <gasps> Mama, that's scary. And like slide off of it. Well, I guess I'd hear a thump. Yeah. <laughs> For a few minutes, I stayed there just trying to scream at my mom. And oh, then no. all of a sudden, I could move again. Oh, I mixed two stories. I thought that after that, you're, that's when your mom saw someone looking at you. No, that was another time, though. <laughs> How we live in the cul-de-sac, you can see our back sliding glass door. I describe it to her. Yes, I told this story. My mom came and she saw a bearded, dark-haired man with a red shirt and black pants. Yeah. And she looked, she thought it was Fonzie because, you know, it looked like him. When she was coming, she saw, like, he was here, right? The bedrooms are over here, right? Uh -huh. And so he went like that. Oh. She saw him walk away, not towards the living room. So like a bedroom. But that way where the hallway was. And she's like, oh, you know, he must have brought her home. And so she gets there and he's gone and she doesn't say anything. Well, because I don't want to talk at that point. And so I went like that, you know, I closed my eyes so I didn't have to hear her say anything. Why don't you want to talk? I had a bad day that day. And, uh, <laughs> and so I just laid there and she came in to check on me and I closed my eyes. Well, then she just left. She's like, oh, Fonzie must have dropped her off and then left. And Your brain tries to rationalize yeah. anything, you know? Yeah. Okay, we are back. We ate some lunch. I ran to pick up my kids at school, and we are back to wrap this up. The grand reveal. Mine is extra spooky because it has a, <laughs> a wart. It's, it's, it has a fungus growing on it. It's <laughs> themed. <laughs> is that? It's a spoiler. Can you say it's bleep, bleep it. themed? And then I anybody who's watched our video will know what I did. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Ta da! Okay, are those cute or what? <laughs> oh! I mean, Shelby's really has something going on with it. We're gonna round this up really quick because I know y'all spent a good chunk of time, a spo spoopy time with us. So you go first. Well, I think we ended with you, but do another one because those are fun. Okay, I do love these. Heroes or villains? Okay, this is where um this is where my head's at with this one. I love Disney villains. Disney makes But if things. you're saying villains in general, I mean I'll have to go with heroes. But Disney villains anime villains always look oh, they make the villains look so cool. I love bad characters that turn good, I oh, guess. Yeah. Or I love loving bad characters. I think Vegeta is a little green alien. So he's like bad, but like I really want him to be good because I was like in love with him. <laughs> but um, I think he did. He does eventually turn good, which is weird. And like my dream was fulfilled. Derek was just telling me this hilarious meme or like this little thing where it was talking about Ursula. And they're like, wait, sis, you signed a contract where she literally sang you the rules and you signed to break your contract. You have your dad come and kill her. It's like, <laughs> it's just like explain why Ursula was actually in the right. <laughs> I got to say heroes, but not like typical cheesy heroes. But like when I think hero, I think of One Punch Man. Okay, this one's just funny. Be chased by five zombies or would you rather be chased by one werewolf? I feel like it has to be the zombies. It depends on what kind. Are they the super speeder zombies? I would, the scary ones? No, I would say they have to be like kind of just pretty much dead, kind of slow zombies. Definitely five zombies. One werewolf is equivalent to at least 50 zombies. Even more than that, because even zombies, if you're if you're if assuming they're that they're like falling apart and they're like trying to get you, like you could punch them, you could knock them off if they do catch up to you. But a werewolf is straight up going to eat you. Like, don't werewolves exist? You. What? Are werewolves real? <laughs> Do you know what a werewolf is? It's a human that changes into a dog. Oh, I was just moon. picturing the dog part. The dog version. So you would say, we, we agree, five zombies. Bo zombies. Ultimately. Yes. Okay, I have to cut out But maybe I mental. don't know what a werewolf is because maybe I would choose werewolf if I knew. Uh, werewolves are super strong, super fast, 
and like usually super buff like they're like fast and buff and mm, and hungry a humanoid wolf yes now i know what you're talking about you don't a know werewolf. what a werewolf. i was picturing a just i think i was picturing a coyote so but still zombies would, no zombies, matter what yeah, yeah zombies okay do one dolls or clowns dolls because clowns don't scare me at all maybe it's because i was in theater and i know that like i just feel bad for people who are performing so why did you pick dolls? Because they're creepy. They're cool and creepy. Like, I don't think I'm scared of clowns. I'll say cl dolls. I'll say dolls. I'd rather have like 50 dolls in my room. Can I ask the next one really quick? Yes. It's vampire or werewolf? Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm out. This one, okay, this one's a good one to end on. Do, would you rather get 20 of your favorite treat on Halloween or get 50 treats that are not your favorite on Halloween. <laughs> like it doesn't mean they're gross. It's just they're not your favorite, but you get 50 of them. Like you're searching through the basket and not a single one is your favorite. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do 20. I'm gonna have to do 50 treats fave. that are not your favorite because <laughs> I'm not a big candy person in general. So I'd like to eat a more of a variety to because see if I don't think I have a favorite chocolate or a favorite candy. I'll do 20 because I have a very I'm picky I think 20 of my favorite that's more than enough I have a good one I want to end on too. okay and I probably should have chose two others that rather than dolls or clowns but run or hide that's a good one this is all fantastical situations yeah. so let's say it's like a goblin or like a ghost or something I, hide. I would hide I think I would hide I think a lot of the times running would make you an easier target wouldn't it but what if you're in a house yeah and you know? you're like well you know you're just gonna be trapped in a closet I feel like I'm a hider. I'm a chicken. I feel like I'm a hider. I feel like I'm a, I would run and then hide. I'd get out of the house and then hide in a bush. If I only had to choose one, hide. We're definitely the type of people that get killed right away in a horror movie. <laughs> this was such a fun video. It was. I mean, it's really fun when we just hang out and just mm -hmm. chat. Thank y'all for sticking around for Spooktober. Stick around. Shelby's going to keep it spooky next month i have some really really good reads i don't know if we're gonna do a tbr this month but i'm really excited to i'm gonna do some some read and check-ins we have a really fun book talk coming up all right guys well y'all take care have a safe and fun halloween i hope you got a lot of candy if you stayed home i hope you still got your special treat curled up by a fire Unless you're in Texas where it's like cold and pretty hot by the evening. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in our next video. See you Happy then. Halloween. Bye. Bye.